Five, six, seven wildebeest. Using on-site observations. 21 wildebeest. Data from collared predators and collared wildebeests. Frixell can build mathematical models that predict the behavior of predator and prey. It reads like a video game where he can create different scenarios between lions and wildebeest. First, Frixell conjures up wildebeests that do not herd. He spreads them out like marbles over the landscape. Then he lets a simulated lion loose. Here's a kill. Yet another kill. And the net result is that it's very easy for a lion to encounter a fresh prey. So with that very high density of prey, you see the lion doesn't even have to go very far before it finds a new meal. In this model, the wildebeest do not stand a chance. The next simulation more closely models a typical herd's behavior. Grouping together creates great big vacant areas that aren't very efficient for the lion to search in. Here, the wildebeest evade predators by grouping together and forming what he calls holes in the landscape. Vast areas where a lion can't see a wildebeest. The superorganism then goes a step further. The holes in the landscape move. Well, when you're the best meal on four hooves, the best thing you can do is be unpredictable. The last thing you want to be is, is, is a meal where the lions expect you to be. Lions know when seasonal herds pass through their territory, but they won't know exactly where to find them. So we can see this on this map of the Serengeti ecosystem, where the bright colors signify really high densities of animals, large herds that are shifting without any kind of predictable pattern across the landscape from month to month. Now imagine that you were a lion or a hyena trying to make a living in that kind of landscape. It's virtually impossible for you to know what would be the best place for you to set up a territory. The herd as superorganism and the surprisingly random nature of its movement keep a predator guessing, keeping the wildebeest a million strong. <laughs> 